Shalom, family. Hey, uh, I just wanted to come before y'all today with a, with a word regarding stewardship. Um, Yahoo has been dealing with me personally on this. Um, there are things that I used to not understand. Like, man, why isn't this happening? Or why, why do it seem like, you know, I keep praying for specific things and I'm not getting them. And it's just crazy because Yahoo, um, recently, he just rearranged my understanding and my thinking when it came to stewardship. Um, and it first started with just being a steward over the gifts and the talents that he gave me, right? Initially, it started with the uh, with music, you know what I mean? First, wanting to use it for my own purposes, and then, you know, eventually saying, hold on, especially once I came into truth, seeing that Yahuwah gave us these abilities and these talents, ultimately to serve him. So, um, it started with that, you know what I mean? Coming to truth, I even went by a whole nother name. I wasn't going by Black Judah at first. I was going by a different name. <laughs> but uh, when I wake, when I woke up to who we were, when Yahuwah opened my eyes to us being the people, specifically us being the descendants of um, Dawid in the Southern Kingdom, Yehuda, um, the tribe of Judah, um, that's ultimately what you know led to the name change to Black Judah. And it was even deeper because, um, again, Hebraically, he called me Yehuda, right? Being being the, the, the warrior kingly tribe, you know, our, our, our king, Yahusha, descends from where? The tribe of Yehuda, the fourth tribe, right? So, again, that is the first lesson that the Most High kind of gave me regarding stewardship. And once that happened, starts, things began to grow and be, be blessed in a way that I can't even, I couldn't even fathom. You know, before I started using my gift for the kingdom, but even deeper, it's other things too. It's like you know, things that he gives you: a house, a car, a job, right? The second thing was, you know, as far as the prophetic mantle, right? You know, teaching prophetically, speaking, giving prophetic words, right? Being able to break down the scriptures from a prophetic prophetic understanding, of course. Uh, in the in the beginning, I really had to sit down and learn Hebrew. I had to learn the letters. I had to learn the application biblically. And once those things happened, the Most High put me in a position to use, I guess you could say, the preaching ability or the, the, the prophesying ability that he gave me in the right way um, to be a good steward over it. Now, I wasn't at first. I'm going to just be honest with you. I still wanted to focus on music more. And he's like, no, nah, I need you to focus on both. Both is what you're called to. You're called to being a psalmist being a prophetic psalmist minstrel right playing the guitar playing the drums playing the piano whatever and writing songs but even greater the even greater calling that goes along with that is prophesying speaking this word that was the initial word that was spoken over you know what i mean um that i would i would be somewhat like uh, a prophet with a mantle like elisha right straightening the paths you know making the crooked path straight and tearing down religious systems right which is ultimately what the Most High is using us to do uh, in the awakening. But I wouldn't be a good steward over those things unless the Most High had taken me on a journey to see how I was being such a bad steward over those gifts that he had gave me. Because as you know, the scripts say the gifts and callings come without repentance, meaning that you can have an unrepentant heart and still flow in the gift that Yahuwah Yuhu, gave you, but use it for your own purposes, right? That's an example of being a bad steward. But I just want to read something to y'all real quick. Won't be a long video. Um, but in Matthew 25, he gives us the parable about the talents. And it's crazy because this is ultimately how the kingdom works. And this is how Yahuwah um, operates when it comes to stewardship, right? If you're not going to be a good, faithful steward over the little things he gives you, why would he give you a bigger assignment, a bigger opportunity, right? And the things that we deem as little I'm telling you, they're big to Yahuwah because he governs you based off of those things, right? Can you submit to what I'm telling you to do? Because that's the thing. A lot of people that are bad stewards, at the end of the day, that comes out of pride, right? Most of these people that have excuses, you can't tell them nothing. Let's just read this real, though, real quick, though, because um, Yahushua gives us a parable in Matthew 25. I'm going to start at verse 14, right, where it says, uh, watch therefore, or verse 13. Watch therefore, because you do not know the day nor the hour in which the son of man is coming, or the son of Adam is coming. For it is like a man going from home who called his own servants and delivered his possessions to them. And to one he gave five talents, another two, and another one, each according to his own ability, and went from home. So he gave three different people talents, 
right? And he gave them an assignment as to what to do with these talents. Understand, whenever Yahuwah gives you something, he's just not going to leave you blind as to what to do with these talents. It's going to come with instructions, right? And it's up to you to be tapped into the Ruach to really hear and discern what Yahuwah is telling you to do with your gifts and with your abilities. Now, um, let's keep reading. Verse 16. And when... It, and he who had received the five talents went and worked with them and made another five talents, right? So the first guy, boom, he did his job. He was a good steward. In the same way, he with the two also gained two more, right? So the guy, the person who was given five talents, good steward. First, the person who was given two talents, good steward. He came back with two, right? Let's keep reading though. Verse 18, but he who had received the one went away and dug in the ground and hid the silver of his master. After a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. Uh-oh. So the guy who was on, he was given the least amount of talents, but he did the least with it. He went and dug, he, he went and dug and buried that thing in the ground for whatever reason, right? Let, let's keep reading them. So now it says, after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled the accounts with them. And he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Master, you delivered me five talents. See, I have gained five more talents besides them, right? And his master said to him, good, I'm sorry, well done, good and trustworthy servant or good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a little. I shall make you, I shall set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. Then he who had received the two talents came and said, master, you delivered me two talents. See, I have gained two more talents besides them, right? Watch this. So of course he says, says to him, um, master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You are trustworthy over little. I shall set you over much enter into the joy of your master. So you see a pattern of the people who are good stewards over the things that he has given them. He's going to give them more because they're good stewards, right? Verse 24, let's read about this wicked one, <laughs> right? The bad steward. Uh, and the one who had received the one talent also came and said, master, I knew you to be a hard man. Reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered the seed. And being afraid, I went and hid your talent in the ground. In the ground. See, you have what is yours. So this is ultimately a picture of the, the, the bad stewards. And again, it comes with the Ruach of pride. You can't humble yourself enough to follow the instructions that the Most High gave you. And in some people, they don't even have the humility to even seek you who would to find out what he wants them to do on the job right so they do their own they do whatever they want to and they ultimately blame it on the master it's some people man who they're not blessed they don't have the things that they want in life and they blame yah when it's really their fault for being bad stewards over the small things that he gave them right crazy this was me at a certain point this was me literally trying to figure out why i'm not being blessed why people not listening to the music why 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 is it go and you was like man because you 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 being a bad you being a terrible steward and you could be you could be extremely talented you could be extremely gifted that's why there's certain people who are extremely gifted and talented and their talents don't go nowhere i'm talking about in the kingdom because you got certain people that are wicked who their talents go everywhere because they have oaths with Hasatan, and i'm not even really gonna go deep into that because that's not the point of this video point of this video is to show you if you are in Yahuwah, you got to be a good steward over what he's giving you. So again, this wicked one blamed the master saying, I know you are, you, I know you to be a hard man reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you, where you have not scattered seed. In other words, this dude didn't even know his master for real. If you know Yahuwah, you'll know how good he is and how faithful he is and how if you were to ask for wisdom, the Bible says he gives it liberally, right? Solomon asked to, to, to have a uh, to have an understanding heart so he could judge Yahuwah's people accordingly, and Yahuwah gave him that. So again, this is it's not no excuse. But going back to the people who walk in pride and are not able to admit or take accountability for their bad stewardship, that's why they stay in the position that they're in. It's because they cannot take accountability. Let's read about what he says. So let, let, so. Um, we see where, the, where this wicked servant who had the one talent hid his. Let's see what the master said to him. Verse 26. And his master answering said to him, you wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Then you should have put my silver with the bankers. Right. And at my coming, you would have received back 
my own with interest. So he's like, man, if you would have just taken a little bit of accountability, a little bit of uh, uh, authority, a little bit of, of ownership over this small talent that I gave you, you would have some type of interest to give me if you even really felt that, right? But you didn't even do that. Verse 28, therefore take away the talent from him and give it to him who possesses 10 talents. Who? Verse 29, everyone who possesses more shall be given and he shall have overflowingly. But from him who does not possess, even what he possesses shall be taken away. So in other words, people who are bad stewards over the little things that Yahuwah gives them, they're not going to have any. He's going to take away the little things that he gave them and give them to somebody else who's more faithful. And, and as it relates to the kingdom, don't expect to be doing something for Yahuwah. Don't really don't expect it to make it into the kingdom because you're exercising that you're not a good steward. Some of us aren't even good stewards over our temples, over our bodies. That's why it's so key for us to when we repent, um, change our diets, right? <laughs> change change the, the, the wicked habits that we know are, are destroying our bodies, right? All these tap, all man, look, all that stuff is foolishness. When you wake up and you come into the truth, there's an expectation for you to elevate and for you to be a good steward over what Yahuwah has given you, right? The person who has, even that which he has shall be taken away if you're a bad steward over it. So you want to know why Yahuwah is not blessing you, right? You want to know why it seems like you, you, you're you never being elevated in the natural and and. And I ain't going to lie to you. Sometimes Yahuwah, you won't be elevated in the natural because you're serving Yahuwah and you won't bow to the, the system of Baal, which in that scenario, Yahuwah is not even going to fully forsake you in that. You look at Job. Job went through all that foolishness for a period of time and then Yahuwah doubled his increase. So again, Yahuwah is not unjust to leave you in a terrible situation like that. You may have to suffer sometimes, but if you endure through it, Yahuwah will bless you, right? Which again, is not necessarily the the american idea of what being blessed means where they only think that it goes back to money right the idea of being blessed is you who is stooping down to give you something and sometimes it's him taking taking something away from you it's also the idea of assured blessing which literally means to be tied connected like a rope to yahuwah right you're connected to him so listen to this verse 29 um for everyone who possesses more shall be given and he shall have overflowingly right so again, because Job was a good steward over the things that Yahuwah gave him before, he gave him double, but he had to endure through a test in a time period where he didn't have much, right? Verse 30, and throw the worthless servant out into outer darkness where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. If you're a wicked servant, you're not going to get into the kingdom. Now, that's what this is saying. If you are not a good steward over what Yahuwah has given you, right? You walk in pride and not humility, right? You're not able to take accountability of your, your actions and your mistakes. Therefore, you won't be able to repent. Therefore, you won't be able to be a good steward over anything. So Yahuwah is going to take that from you. And like it says about this wicked servant, this is a parable, but it's it's he's likening natural things to spiritual things, to Ruachal things, right? If you can't be a good steward over the things that Yahuwah has given you in the Ruach, why would he, why would he give you anything in the natural, right? So I'm saying all this to say, listen, if you want to make it into the kingdom, you got to be a good steward over what Yahuwah has given you. I learned my lesson, you know, in my in my 20s, going into my 30s now. Um, I get it. I get it. And, you know, my prayer for Yasharel is that we really seek Yahuwah on where we have been bad stewards in our life and ask him to lead us and guide us so that we can take authority over these things, right, and serve him, humble ourselves, right? So... I just wanted to put that out there, man. Stewardship is a big thing. It's a big deal in the kingdom. Even if you've been given a small job, a small assignment in your eyes, understand Yahuwah is looking at everything, right? He looked at this guy who had one talent the same way he looked at the guys who had two talents and five talents and 10 talents, right? It's all the same to Yahuwah, whatever your job is in the kingdom. So hallelujah. I just want to put that out there for y'all. Shalom.